on the 31st day of October, Halloween gave to me 31 pipes scratching, 30 Lonnie's getting their asses away from there, 29 Sam's a stabbing, 28 taters totting, 27 baby incubators, 26 father's eyes, 25 nipples biting, 24 demons moaning, 23 heads skittering, 22 detectives thrilling, 21 wiener stretching, 20 zombies climbing, 19 Richards cheesing, 18 undead trains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincent's cracking, 15 Lee's counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy's seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hello there. Happy Halloween, everybody. It is October 31st, uh, the the greatest day, uh, whatever got invented. Happy, happy, happy Halloween. Uh, This is it. This is our last episode of our uh, 31 Days of Halloween here on Legion Podcasts. Uh, Look, first of all, thanks for joining me on this. I have had a ball. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it, too. It has been uh, a really... Uh, fun for me to celebrate the holiday by sort of presenting this this list of movies to you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know some of you have uh, have told me hither and yon uh, that you you caught a movie or or were reminded of a movie uh, because we mentioned it here and and really enjoyed it. So uh, thanks for that. Thanks for participating. Uh, I look forward to doing this again next year. Uh, I'm already excited about that prospect, but, but look, we got a whole movie to talk about, uh, before we talk about plans for the future. And that movie is ghost watch from 1992. Um, this is my, my, (laughs) my surefire slam bang Halloween recommendation, or maybe it's just the thing I wanted to watch on Halloween. Uh, here's why. Uh, I kind of came to ghost watch late and I don't remember how I got wind of it, but I, I, somewhere or another, I heard the story, uh, because I love, uh, a, a good tale of hysteria and, uh, I've always enjoyed the, uh, Orson Welles war of the world story, which if you listen to pick six movies, which I would encourage you to do. Uh, when we talked about the Spielberg War of the Worlds, uh, Chad's introduction pointed out that maybe the hysteria surrounding the uh, the War of the Worlds uh, broadcast from Orson Welles uh, maybe wasn't as big a deal as perhaps the legend would have you believe. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't love those stories. So when I caught wind of the fact that there was this British television presentation called Ghost Watch that presented itself as a real thing. And it freaked people out. And w- as, as soon as I heard that, I was like, ah, I gotta see that. So I tracked down a copy of Ghost Watch. And, and the first time I saw it, I f- immediately fell in love. Because it is, uh, in addition to being earnest about what it's trying to do, which is to scare the bejesus out of the people watching it, it is in, it, it's just kind of everything I love about horror movies. And so the, the premise is that it's a, a BBC One presentation on Halloween night, and they are going to... Uh, have a live crew at the most haunted house in England. And uh, during the course of that night, it's a a woman and her sound guy and a cameraman and a mother and her two kids uh, who live in this uh, sort of a duplex kind of thing. And they are being plagued by a specter that they uh, refer to as pipes, 
uh, because he makes banging sounds that, that sound like someone banging on the pipes. Um, and, and so our crew, uh, is heading into the house to, uh, try to capture some evidence of supernatural goings on. Meanwhile, there's a reporter outside who's a real ham, who's cutting up with, uh, some of the locals and filling in some of the backstory and, uh, sort of framing all of this is the show itself where, uh, the show ghost watch is being hosted by an in-studio host who is, uh, has a co-host who is a paranormal researcher and they are cutting in between all of these things and putting together a television show, right? Like they're, they're taking phone calls and people are telling their stories. And then as the evening goes along, they start getting phone calls uh, from people saying, Hey, I saw uh, a figure in this video that you showed in the upfront. And what the show kind of does is it starts to make you question as a viewer whether or not the people on the screen are crazy or you're crazy because you know you saw something and they're looking at the same thing and they're telling you there's nothing there. And like there's uh, there's a knowing uh, sense of, <laughs> of con artistry to this this program where they're duping the audience, you as the audience, me as the audience, they're duping us. And I love it. I love the fact that they are pretending that this is all totally for real uh, to the point where, as uh, Duncan and I have discussed a number of times, because I'm always delighted when the subject comes up, that he is old enough to remember when this thing aired and people flipped their shit and people got real angry Parents got real, real fucking angry at the fact that their kids were now losing their goddamn minds because they thought England was now haunted. So, so I don't want to get like, here's the thing. As much as I want to talk about ghost watch, if you've never seen it and it's, it's not the most well-known film, I don't want to ruin all the little bits and bobs that make it kind of wonderful. So I'm not going to go too much into the scares, although I think it builds to a crescendo and I think that crescendo is very spooky and unsettling. Um, but what I like most about ghost watch, I think is that it feels authentic. And that's one of the hardest things you can do with these kind of, uh, fake documentaries or mockumentaries, if you will, um, or found footage or that kind of thing. Like that's why this is kind of a perfect storm for me of a movie. I love Because there's that kind of found footage element, which when done right, I think really works. I think found footage can be incredibly convincing, but it has to be convincing. And Ghostwatch is. Ghostwatch feels real. Because it's done by people who are actually reporters, which is another part of the con that I really respect. Where they used honest-to-goodness reporters to pretend that ghosts were real. Oh, fucking BBC. Mwah. So, in addition to the found footage thing, I like a good ghost story. Always have, always will. I love a good ghost story. And that's kind of what this is at the end of the day. Which is, hey, we've got a haunted house. Throughout the episode uh, of, of Ghost Watch, we are learning more and more about the nature of that haunting and who the ghost might be. And there are some twists and turns along the way. Uh, all that stuff is, is fucking great. Uh, So we've got found footage, we've got ghost stories, and then do you stick the landing? That's always the thing with found footage movies. Do you fuck it up at the end? And Ghostwatch doesn't. Ghostwatch goes fucking big. They go big with it, and I love it. So, uh, look, Ghostwatch is everything I want out of a Halloween movie. It's it, It feels scary. It's atmospheric. It's a ghost story. It's a good party movie. Um, If you want to watch it with some friends, ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, And it just, like, it's such a a curiosity, but it also is totally effective in what it's setting out to do, which is to be, uh, as as seen before, uh, scare the bejesus out of people. And I do think it's scary. That's the other thing about Ghostwatch. I've kind of mentioned this, 
But Ghostwatch is genuinely unsettling. There are things in in the uh, uh, the runtime of Ghostwatch that really upset me. Um, <laughs> it, like some of it's a little silly, but also in the right way. Uh, like one of there, there's this accompanying sound of cats, and when you kind of learn why, it's like, oh, well, that's fucking gruesome. But uh, at the same time, a bunch of cats yelling can be uh, kind of funny to me because uh, I always think of that sound effect when somebody like steps on a cat. But that's me. That's not you. Um, but yeah, uh, that aside, aside from my cat sound foibles, uh, it 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 utterly succeeds at at being the thing it presents itself to be. So by the time that the show is ending, I would imagine if I were a kid in England, I would be like, holy fuck, are my neighbors okay? <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm I'm worried about us here in this house, sure, but I'm worried that maybe society has broken down just as much as anything, and any ghost story that ends in the apocalypse... Sign me the fuck up. Um, yeah, I love, love, love Ghostwatch. Uh, I think it is, uh, as I said, just a, a perfect Halloween movie. It certainly was for me this year. I uh, absolutely uh, just fell in love with Ghostwatch all over again because it kind of unsettles me. By the end of it, I'm like wiggling in my seat. I'm not real happy about what I'm seeing on screen. Uh, it really still affects me. It gives me the shivers. Um, not the David Cronenberg sexy shivers either. The, the, oh crap, uh, am I going to see something out of the corner of my eye when I turn my head kind of shivers? Uh, cause a lot of that, uh, is, is in ghost watch. There's a lot of, oh, did you see that? Oh, maybe you didn't see that there. Uh, look, there are plenty of Buzzfeed articles about all the shit you can see in the background of, uh, of ghost watch, but don't, don't look it up before you see the movie, see the movie and then look up all the shit you didn't see when you were watching it the first time. And then you can watch it again the next Halloween. So, look, that's it. That's Ghost Watch. You should uh, 100% watch that for Halloween if you haven't already. Uh, for your, you know, October celebration. Um, if you've never seen it, definitely put it on the menu. I, I think it's a wonderful ghost story. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next year to top it. Ghost Watch is, is pretty good. I mean, we talked about a lot of good stuff. We talked about Halloween and the thing and the fog. A lot of, a lot of John Carpenter on our list this year. Not so much next year, I imagine. But speaking of next year, folks, that's it. We got to wrap it up uh, as much as I hate to do it. This is it. This is uh, what we've all been waiting for. So have a great Saturday. Have a spooky Saturday. Most of all, get out there, have a great Halloween or stay inside and have a great Halloween. However you're going to do it. Don't go out there. It's probably not a great idea right now, but, uh, have yourselves a great Halloween anyway, like throw on some movies, pop some popcorn, hang out on legionpodcast.com and, uh, join us on the, the Facebook group page. Um, say, say hello. Tell me what you're watching for Halloween. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, uh, today proper to celebrate, but, uh, I will uh, I will be around and, and streaming or watching movies or participating in the Facebook group or something uh, because it, it's Halloween and by God, we are going to enjoy it. So, so saith the editor in chief of Legion podcast. Uh, hey, folks, uh, before we get out of here, I, I've been hesitant to do any sort of promotional stuff, but I'm going to do it now because it's the last one. And by my count, we've done about uh, five hours worth of recording for all the, uh, 31 hour, uh, 31 hours, 31 days of Halloween. Um, so if you would, uh, be sure you're subscribing to the, uh, Legion podcast, uh, podcast feed on whatever podcast app you use. Um, uh, be sure, uh, if you got a couple extra bucks rolling around that you're hopping over to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Legion podcasts where uh, ordinarily I would be doing a lot of commentary stuff. Haven't been doing so much of that this month, but I'm going to catch up, I swear. Uh, <laughs> um, also, uh, you can, uh, if you go to legionpodcast.com, there is a, a big banner on the right side of that page uh, for those uh, people in need right now. And we have been fortunate enough at Legion Podcast for some of our uh, community members to not be 
financially impacted by uh, this pandemic and uh, the ensuing economic downturn for many people. Um, and we've been able to give back a little bit. So if you are willing to give a little bit, uh, it, it, like this is a real give a penny, take a penny kind of situation. Uh, if you got a penny, uh, head over to legionpodcast.com and that'll take you to our uh, GoFundMe uh, that will allow you to uh, throw us a, a couple of bucks. What do we do with that couple of bucks? Well, here's the the, the, the take a penny. Um, if you're having trouble with bills right now, uh, it, you know, if, if there's something we can do to help, if there's medicine you need, um, let us know. You know, we, we don't have unlimited resources, but by God, we're trying. And and for those people leaving a penny, God bless you. Yahweh bless you. The universe embrace your essence. Whatever you believe in, you're, you're doing a karmic good if you're helping out other people at a time like this. Uh, and like I said, if you need a penny, hey man, there ain't no shame in that. Don't, don't, don't ever be ashamed to, to ask for help when you need it. That's what this community is here for. Uh, I, I firmly believe in the, the goodness and kindness of the people uh, here at legionpodcast.com. So that's enough uh, tooting of horns, both my own and others. Um, thanks again. This has been a wonderful Halloween season. Uh, thanks to you guys and, and being able to do this with you and, and for you and around you and next to you and near you. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. There is big stuff coming up. Keep an ear out for more uh, about November or as I like to think of it, no vampire. Just saying, just saying it's coming. Uh, and, and some more uh, stuff coming in December. That's going to be real fun too. So, so stay tuned and uh, and I'll talk to you real soon. In the meantime, happy Halloween. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye.